So I want to talk about the nervous system. It's part of a communication system in the body, and there's two main communication systems. We have the nervous system, and then over here we have the hormone system. And the difference is that the communications travel through the nerves with the nervous system and their electrical impulses, and then the endocrine system uses hormones as its communication particles, and they travel through the blood. Okay? So let's first talk about the two main parts of the nervous system. We're just going to stick with nervous system now, not endocrine system. We have the peripheral nervous system, which is outside the central nervous system. So we have a central nervous system, which is the brain and the spinal cord, and then we have everything outside. Those are the two main systems. So central ner nervous system controls and coordinates every single body function, and, and um, it does it through pre-programmed um, uh, like, like almost like genetic blueprints that have messages that, that send signals to keep the body in a survival mode um, so everything works. And then the peripheral nervous system has two parts. One is the somatic, which somatic means body um, in Latin, but the somatic nervous system controls all the muscles. Okay, so skeletal muscles and smooth muscles. So that's what that system is. And then we have another part of the peripheral nervous system called the autonomic nervous system. This is one I want to spend a little bit more time on. Autonomic is, is a term, a Greek term for independent, because it's almost like this can work independent of this over here. It has its own kind of microchips or mini brains uh, because it can run uh, from those things called ganglia. Do you remember the ganglia studying about that? Those are like mini little nerve centers that are down your spinal column and you have plexuses of nerves which are like ganglia in the abdomen too, like the solar plexus and all these different um, wiring, so to speak. Um, it's really simple when you think about it. There's, there's a lot of wires that come out of the brain and they either go to the muscles or they go to the autonomic nervous system which controls and coordinates glands and organs. And the sympathetic nervous system is kind of like the on switch. So it activates things. And then you have the parasympathetic, means it's kind of like an off switch. And the parasympathetic controls more rest and digestion. And the sympathetic is more the flight or fight. Um, I guess a couple little background pieces of information would be to describe it. Like, let's say, for example, you're going to run upstairs. And if you did not have your body adapting to that sudden shift and change in gravity running up, the blood wouldn't get up to your brain because when you run up fast, all the blood's going to go down to your feet and you will pass out. So in order for the body to adapt to that change in elevation and stress, the sympathetic nervous system kicks in there, pumps adrenaline, and pushes the blood up to the brain. And it does it on a gradient. So if the person has weak sympathetics, they won't be able to react towards stress. They won't be able to prepare the body for a stressful state. And that's what the sympathetic nervous system does. So the sympathetic nervous system is, um, if you can envision being chased by a tiger, you would have to increase blood flow to the muscles. Uh, you're going to have to increase brain acuteness and awareness. You're going to have to um, uh, release, dump a lot of sugars for the muscles to use as fuel because you're not going to have time to burn fat. So all those reactions of adapting the body to either uh, running away or fighting would be the sympathetic nervous system. Now, the opposing system would be the parasympathetic. So once you run up to the top of the, the stairs, your blood pressure has to return and come down. <clears throat> so this is the recovery system. The parasympathetic kicks in when you're at rest and when you're sleeping. So that's when everything actually, it's, so it works hard at calming you down. The parasympathetic is where you burn all the fat when you're sleeping, right? It's a calming rest, and then that's when you digest. When you are in a sympathetic mode, 
the, the, uh, the parasympathetic kind of shuts down, and to that degree, um, it affects, it kind of blocks your reproductive system. Because when you're chased by a tiger, you don't need to have a baby or something. You don't have to get pregnant. Um, but when you're actually being chased by a tiger, you also um, don't need to digest. So in other words, when you kick in the sympathetic, digestion shuts off, reproductive shuts off, sleeping shuts off. But when you're in parasympathetic, everything is chilled out, you're recovering, your body's adapting to things. So the whole goal of this system is to maintain something called homeostasis. Now, what is homeostasis? That is the a body's ability to adapt to some type of environmental situation or change or stress. So the inside of your body is adapting to the outside to maintain equilibrium, okay, to a constant level. So in the body, there's all these certain conditions that our body kind of stays in equilibrium. Like let's say temperature. Temperature is 98.6. The pH of your blood is 7.34 or 7.34, uh, one of the two. Um, the pH of your urine should be 6.0. Uh, the blood pressure should be 120 over 80. The pulse rate should be 72. These are all equilibrium things that your body's trying to maintain. Your blood glucose should be 100 exactly. Well, the autonomic nervous system keeps all these adapting. So if you actually go outside and you actually get cold, your body heats up. If, you're, um, if you run upstairs, your blood pressure will adapt and then the parasympathetic will keep bringing it down to that equilibrium. So we get all these body functions that the autonomic nervous system controls um, and it controls it not necessarily on an on switch or an off switch, but more like a dimmer switch. So there's slow gradient approaches to this system and this system. So let's say you're going uh, for a mild jog. Well, this thing might be kicked in, but you have this one at the same time. So they're kind of like two dimmer switches that kind of on a gradient, this will increase and this will increase depending on the level of effort or change that occurs. So if you see your child, your baby underneath the car, it's going to be 100% sympathetic. You're going to lift that car off the baby. But if you just see like a little roach that you want to kill, you might have like 10% sympathetic and mostly parasympathetic. So really, it's not on and off switch. It's kind of like a gradient approach. And then there's an enteric system right here, which is the digestive system. So that's the other, the third autonomic nervous system uh, section, enteric, which is digestion, and this has just as many neurons and nerve nerves, nerve endings, as you would have in your spinal column. And so this system is amazing because it, um, it can work on its own, and it controls like a, a mesh around the colon to actually allow it to pump, it's called peristalsis, or helping it become mobile along the 30, 31 feet of intestine. So this is what that system um, actually does. So that's pretty much the basics of the different systems. And then in the next video, I'm going to show you how we measure the autonomic nervous system.